Hello. Welcome. Yes, you are at the right spot. This is called some board games. How can I help you today? You're the one who called in earlier, right? Perfect. Yes, I am actually pretty excited to see you. I um, have picked out a few games based off of the things that you would be interested in. And um, they do have faster playtime than your typical Scythe or Eclipse game. Yeah, if you're trying to get a friend or partner into board games, these are great ones for them to get started. Um, so let's take a look at them. The first one that I wanted to show you was called Onitama. I actually have it right here. As it says on the box, it says, an elegant and simple game of martial tactics. We do also carry the expansions, if that was something that you were interested in. We can take a look at those if you feel that you groove it on this one. So, I'll go ahead and open the box. Here. So that's how it opens. Here. It says Onitama. And here we have the playmat. Which I think is pretty interesting because it is... Um, just a, a large mouse pad. So I'll go ahead and lay that out for you so you can see. It is a two player game. Each uh, team has students and a teacher. Ooh. We have students here. You can see students and they would be placed on the board like this or and teacher the sensei I guess goes there and so I can go ahead and set this up so you get a really good visualization of how it would look if you were to play this. Teacher. Alright. So, this game is very simple, but it is a thinker. You will find yourself having to prepare two to three turns ahead to calculate you know, what your best move is, what you want to do. So your movements are also determined by these cards. They're very nice cards. So they are chosen at random. And, uh, Here's what some of them look like. That one's pretty cool. Dragon. So obviously the black space here would be where your starting character is and the highlighted boxes are your potential uh, where you can move. So 
so as you play um, you always have two moves that you can select from only choosing one each turn and then you have an extra off to the side I'll just place this to the side here so if you were to do the crab movement with a student you would place it aside here and take this one and then the next player would play a move say I play monkey oops, I selected an extra so I select this move now I place it to the side and I grab this one so it's always rotating as you can see unless you decide to hoard a movement and just keep it for the right time so, yeah were you interested in looking at expansions? yes I would love to show you the expansions so this one is pretty straightforward this expansion is called Sensei's Path and it is just extra movement cards they, all the boxes are similar with a like a magnetic glass and they swing open this way so I can show you what these look like There's just that uh, another deck of possible movements here. Let's see. So this one's fairly simple. It's when you've played enough and you want to add more spice, I guess. It's okay. Making it all feel a little bit newer so that's pretty simple I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in the box so we have that expansion and next we have way of the wind Once again, it has a box just like the others. And this comes with movement cards, but there's a new character. This is the Wind Spirit. It's very beautiful. Um, and it reminds me a little bit of the legend of Korra when she was learning about the first avatar so this wind spirit will always start in the center of the board and the rule book says If you play a Wind Spirit card in your hand, you may use it to move two pawns. Each Wind Spirit card shows two moves on it, a top move and a bottom. When you play a Wind Spirit card, you first use the top move to move your student or your master. 
just like normal. Then, if it is possible, you must also move the wind spirit as shown in the bottom move. If either move has no legal options, that move is ignored. So, suppose an example of this. Your top movement would be the student. So let's say you want to move the student and then for the bottom you can move the spirit to any one of those spots. Second. Another important piece of information if the wind spirit lands on a student pawn, friendly or enemy, it does not capture it. Instead, swaps places with the other pawn. The wind spirit can never move into the same space as a master pawn, friendly or enemy. So he can never swap places here, but if the spirit made a move and landed on this character, the character would move to the wind spirits previous space. So this one is a lot of fun. A lot of fun so you can use the wind spirit um, to advantage uh, for an advantage for yourself or you can use it to mess up the other players moves. So um, what did you think about this one? It is pretty quick on play time. Um, I think maybe the longest game I have played was 45 minutes. Yeah. Yes, I can go ahead and show you some more. doesn't say how many, but I can count them for you if you'd like. Yeah. One. Two. Three. Four. me feel weird, but I guess it comes with 11. Hmm. Yeah. So as I'm packing up, oh, please tell me what do you think? Mm-hmm. I haven't really heard much negative feedback about this one. So I am of no help here. I personally have no complaints. I I truly believe the pieces are well made. They're not flimsy. The mat is incredible. I have never played with a mat like this. Usually if you want mats like this, you have to uh, purchase them outside of the game.
gonna say back in the box. Sure that is nice and neat. And yeah. Hold this up. And then I close it up. So another positive is setup is very easy. Clean up just as easy. So this definitely seems like a possibility for you. Excellent. Yes. I love playing this one. Um My family also enjoys to play this one. So, we like it. The second one that I wanted to show you was Santorini. Yes. It is so colorful and uh, not too, too colorful I guess the the art on the box I think is amazing build like a mortal win like a god so here we have Santorini spell S a N T O R I N I Just in case you were curious Here are the pieces. This one is not as much of a thinker, but it is very fun and very well made in my opinion. So, the purpose of this game is to build the structure and once you reach the third level um you uh are wanting to get your worker to the top floor meanwhile the other player will be trying to cap your structure off once there is a dome on top a worker cannot be placed on top so I can show you the board. Now, I did want to mention these are god cards, making the game more interesting. Um, but I would highly recommend the first few times that you play to be. Um, without them so that you can really get the hang of it so we'll go ahead and grab one set of rules out
we can just set up in here. So this looks like, you know, a cliff side. It is made of plastic and then the playing board is on top. Oh, that sound. It was our humidifier. Yes. Lots of the workers here have minus issues. Lots of the customers do too. Maybe allergies. Okay, so here are the workers. So you get two workers per team. And let's read. Players take turns starting with the start player who first place their workers on your turn, select one of your workers. You must move and then build in that order with the selected worker. To move your selected worker into one of the eight neighboring spaces. So if your worker is here, any one of these they can move to. A worker may move up a maximum of one level higher, move down any number of levels lower, or move along the same level. A worker may not move up more than one level. And I guess I can show you here. Know what that looks like. And I can also build you a couple little houses to show you potentially what this game would look like if you were to play it. We always start off with the base piece. Here, I'll just put it there for fun. And I can put this one here and I can put this here hmm I'll make those touch So, you can have your worker go to, they start on the floor, go here, that's one movement, go here, and then obviously they want to get to the top of a building, like so. Yes, I put them all in order. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> um, and so, but a player, if they wanted to jump down, they could jump down all those spaces. And yes, I can show you what the domes look like. That's what that would look like on top. I think it looks uh, pretty cute. And I also think that they're quite fun to play with. Uh, 
Um, so far, what are you thinking about this one? Yes, I find this one to be very visually pleasing. Very simple, but you can also mess over your other opponent. the god cards yeah all of these are our essentially try me uh, games so if you were to purchase one you would get a, a brand new one we do not sell used ones Um, we highly recommend that used board games get donated rather than sold again. Or just given away for free. So here are what the god cards look like. The cards are excellent quality. Even better than the Onitama ones, which are fine. But these are exquisite, exquisite. Here's what one looks like. So he has a special power that if he goes, if your character goes down two stories, you automatically win the game. Um, I'm not quite sure what that power is. your turn. You may remove an unoccupied block, not known, neighboring your unmoved worker. You also remove any tokens on the block. So each one has a special uh, power ability. Oh, it's so pretty. I love green. Yes, the buildings are very bland, they are white, but the actual game is very nice. The cards are beautiful. Oh, Medusa. And Cronus. He has blue eyes, a little sand timer. I know that's not what you call it. And it looks fairly windy where he is. Mm hmm. Chaos. You want to know what this one does? Okay. Chaos. Shuffle all unused, simple. God power cards into a face down deck on your play area. Draw the top God power card and place it face up beside the deck. Very chaotic. Another green. Yes. Morpheus. Oh. 
kind of looks like Daenerys. Oh my, possibly a before and after. No. <laughs> Poseidon, Zeus is quite the perfect uh, beard. So good. So. There are plenty to choose from, as you can see. So these definitely also keep the game interesting. It can almost feel like you are playing a different game every time. So. I love when games have that uh, very uh, like randomized maps or just little things like this that keep it interesting so you don't feel like you're playing the exact same thing over and over. Yes. Okay, so please tell me what do you think about this one? Mm hmm. Yeah, it would also be great for kids. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't have any, but I know of people who do. So cleanup for this is also very good. Pretty quick, easy. Yeah, ages eight and up, and it is a two to four player Yes. So, would you like for me to set that aside or put it back? I can have Roger. I can call him on the intercom, tell him to come get this one, take it away, take it out of your sight. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. I will just set it aside. The last one that I'd like to show you is Survive Escape from Atlantis. This is a very well-loved game. Please do not make fun of our box. Everyone in the store likes to play this. We have all taken it home a few times and maybe not treated it as nice as we should have. Some, some of us have competitive family members, so. This is a cute and adventurous game, but it can absolutely be cut throat. So, the rules are a nice book. Very useful information. Sometimes you cannot possibly remember what all the tiles mean. So I would definitely consider this one to be the most advanced uh, as far as someone who does not board game at all. Okay. 
the board is quite large. So you will need a big playing space. Um, so basically, you're on an island. You're trying to get off the island before it explodes. You know, no big deal. And uh, there are things that can stop you, kill you. So here are your here are your little meatballs. Yellow, blue, red, and green. Me? Oh, I'm always yellow. Always. And if I'm not, then I don't care. <laughs> okay, I will try to see this. Yes, I can show you the board. Look at this. Mm -hmm. So, here it is. Quite large. Not the biggest, but it it's you'll want a nice good good table to play this on. So some of the obstacles we have in this game are sharks. Serpents, whales. I'll show you. This is what the whale looks like. They're made of wood. Here, very nice. The shark is just a shark fin. Mhm. Mm Donna. Donna. No. Yeah. Serpent, purple, yes, okay. here are the boats, you will create an island, taking turns, I'll just kind of lay some pieces out so you can get an idea of what this will look like. the whole island up to really give you the full effect. I said the full effect. Loud. Hmm. And these little monsters out of the way. No, yeah, you're right. Whales aren't monsters. Where would you want me to put this one? Good choice. Alright, and then last we have these rock pieces. They are the last to go. You'll see what I mean. There we go. Okay, so the island stays within the, this dark border. I don't know if you can see that. And then you obviously you 
each people has a different point value on their bottoms. So you'll set them out. Um, and so the turns go, you have three movements. One, let's say I do three. And then after you turn, you select the sand tile. You flip it over. Uh, and this is instructions. And then you roll a die to see which monster you can move. Obviously, you want monsters to attack the other team. Or you simply just want to move them away from your island, which is where you are trying to go. Skirt. And then you just get them on the island. So everyone is always picking tiles as their turns pass. And if you have a player that was set on the tile, you can dunk them in the water. There you go. You're just floating now. And then uh, after all the sand tiles are gone, you go for the forest. And then last you go for these ones. So this one determines the end of the game. So when this tile is selected, the game is over and the points are scored based off of the meeples that you have that were able to get away. And whoever has the highest score wins. It is my favorite. Yes. We're not supposed to say which ones we like the most, but I will do it. And this one is my favorite. Please don't tell my boss. This is a squid and a dolphin. Yeah, those are also other things that can be introduced to the game. Yeah, so this one does obviously have the longest setup time and cleanup time. Um, and it will also uh, take you Hmm, maybe depending on who you're playing with, uh, it could take an hour or more to get a whole game in. So don't tell my boss, but we are missing a dolphin from this set. I think he would lose his mind if he knew. Yes, the boats are also made of wood.
Yes, great. Everything fits perfectly. And you also don't have to worry about when you pick it up and the pieces kind of flying everywhere. Because you did have that, uh, the board set as a barrier. So I will present these again to you. Tell me. what you are thinking of purchasing today and how many copies I am getting hmm I am actually kind of surprised that you picked that one <laughs> yeah, I just thought that you would be into one of the other ones more but I am extremely excited that you will be experiencing that game and also introducing someone to it as well. Well, I will go ahead and call the front, ask them to get the game for you, and they can get you checked out, okay? Thank you for coming.